guys, my name is Angie, and today my topic will be on process needs. Um, I will be discussing about what different types of like red and process needs, and um, specifically about the health hazards that they cause. My main claim is that process needs negatively <coughs> affect human health, and my main three points that support my main claim are that one, large consumption of process needs higher the risk of cardiovascular disease. And for some of you who don't know what cardiovascular is, it, it's another word for heart. So basically, in other words, it does help you, I mean, it does higher the risk of um, causing heart disease. And my second point is that processed meats also cause cancer and diabetes. And last but not least, it causes early death. Um, uh, there are different processed meats that are out there, such as luncheon meats like Spam, bacon, hamburgers, ham, pastrami, hot dogs, and so on. Um, my first support is that processed meats higher the risk of cardiovascular disease, and a multinational group of scientists um, tracked the health of over half a million people from around the world, and they found that people who ate a lot of processed meats are much more likely to die of heart attacks and strokes. Now, what the definition of a lot is, is about 20 grams a day. And 20 grams is equivalent to one thin strip of bacon. Just imagine how many grams are in a grand slam at Denny's. It counts out to 130 grams. Now, processed meats contain a lot of fats, sodiums, and chemicals that are used to preserve the meat. And for example, salami can doesn't need, need to be refrigerated and contains about 50% of fat. Um, our DNA is damaged by all these chemically contained foods that we consume, and I feel like it's a huge issue that we should all know about. And because of the way we eat, we lack nutrition for our brains, which they deprive, and our brain cells <coughs> are killed, and the meats that we are eating block our arteries, which causes strokes. Um, this leads to my second main point, which is also proven that these meats cause cancer and diabetes through the chemicals such as nitrate, which is a preservative for the meat with sodium. And um, according to American Institution of Cancer Research, people who ate 3.5 ounces of red, red meat a day, such as beef, lamb, pork, had an increase of 17% risk of developing colon cancer. And it shows that an average of 64,000 cases per year could be prevented just by cutting down on the, the ounces of red meat that you eat. And you guys should look at um, white meats, such as chicken and stuff like that. Um, according to Martha Brogan, a cardiologist doctor from University of Northwestern, explains that sodium nitrate damages your blood vessels, causing you, causing, causing your blood flow to slow down. Um, this leads to my third point, um, showing that large quantities of red meat causes early death. And uh, these meats contain a lot of calories, which lead to weight gain, obesity, and um, for example, bacon and spam, they don't even need to be cooked with oils, and they can be cooked by themselves on the pan. Um, consumers are also more likely to adapt to smoking habits and exercise less because of their eating habits with the red meats and the processed meats that they have. Um, study, study leader Sabine Ro Ro Norman, a professor of, of epidemiology at the University of Zurich explains that people who eat sausages and ham um, also tend to eat less fruits and vegetables. And from this, I conclude my main claim that processed meats negatively affects human health with higher risks of heart disease, developing cancer, and causes of early death. Um, thank you.
All right, Angie, you start off pretty well with the proposition. There's a reasonable preview of what you're talking about. It's fairly easy to follow. Um, so, so you're okay there. Uh, the internal structure on the on some on that first argument, there are some claims that you're making that are not supported by any data. You make an argument that says that brain cells die, that it alters the DNA, and I didn't hear any information that supported that, uh, which is strange because on the other points you have very good information that connects, for instance, the nitrates to risk factors of colon cancer. You've got some statistical relationships between uh, people trading off of uh, the foods they consume for other foods that might be healthier for them. Uh, so th I, on the first point, I thought it was a little bit problematic when it came to the information. But on the second and the third point, you were a little bit more effective on that. Um, there are a couple of places where your information is not always specific to processed meats. And I, I do think that you do a good job in that one study citing what you mean by a lot. Uh, that helps uh, make it seem like it's a, you know, a, a it doesn't require a substantial amount for people to be subject to these issues. Uh, you know, a, a slice of bacon a day probably is uh, not all that atypical for people. You know, most people maybe they have two or three slices of bacon one day or something like that, and they're not eating bacon every day. I don't know how many of you eat bacon every day. Just a question. Like six every, day. Pieces. Every, every no, every day a piece every day. Six pieces every day, you're dead. You know, <laughs> sorry. So that's going to be a little bit of an issue. All right. Um, presentation issues. Look, there's a lot of information, but you're rushing. You don't need to rush. You've got plenty of time. You've got almost two more minutes that you could use, so you need to slow down a little bit. Sometimes the numbers get a little bit overwhelming. Also, you need to look at the audience a little bit more. Uh, it really feels like you're just reading to us at times, and you want to make a, a stronger connection with the audience. Okay. Thank you.